Welcome to this art lesson. I made this video for the beginner, someone who's looking to learn the basics in airbrush painting. We're going to go over color mixing, applying paint to the canvas to get sharp lines and softer lines, and we're also going to be talking about different erasing techniques to get textures into our painting. For supplies, the first thing you're going to need is any airbrush with a compressor. I'm going to be spraying at 20 psi. You'll also need a paint brand that can be scratched into and erased. My favorite two lines are Createx Illustration Colors and ComArt. In order to erase the paint, we're going to need an aggressive eraser, so I recommend the Stadler Mars Razor or the Faber-Castell 7058B. We're also going to need a surface that has zero texture to it, so the easiest thing to do is to set up your own canvas or paper. I have a link down below in the description showing you how to do that. And the last thing we're going to need is some masking tools. So I'm going to be using frisket film and I'm also going to be using some masking tape and some 3M vinyl tape. Up on the screen now is a photo of the completed painting. I'm also adding a second copy in. Now this one has a grid on top of it and you could use this to transfer it over to your canvas or paper. Now since this is one by one, you could set it up any size you like as long as you're using square grids. Now you could transfer the contours onto your canvas or paper any way you like, but the best way to learn in my opinion is to use a grid. I used a two inch by two inch grid, and once I have the contours down, I usually come in with a kneaded eraser and lighten everything. This way when I paint over it, those lines don't show through. Of course, you could trace the image onto your surface, or you could even use a projector to get the contours down. The one thing I don't recommend is using cutouts. I'm well aware that printing out your image and then cutting out the outlines to create a stencil is really popular among airbrush artists. Me personally, I'm not a big fan of it because once you cut out uh, some sort of stencil, you're always limited by your cutout. It's very difficult to adjust or change it the way you can if you start with a pencil drawing. Once we have our drawing down, we're going to use Frisket to cut out the edges and that's going to give a sharp line. The nice thing about Frisket is we could adjust it or change it. So you could make these candles skinnier, wider, you could really do whatever you like with it. And I, in my opinion, it just gives you way more control over your final painting. These of course are just suggestions, it's best to do what you're most comfortable with. So with all that out of the way, let's get right into the painting. The first color I'm starting with is Createx Illustration Black. Now I thin it down with a few drops of distilled water. So about 10 drops of black and two drops of distilled water. So here I'm using gessoed canvas. You could also use gessoed paper. That'll work just the same. And I'm applying this black paint into the background. Now here I'm using a shield to help define some of the edges around the candle. Later we'll switch over to uh, some frisket film. But I just want to show you there's different options. To mask, you could use tape, you could use frisket film, or you could use different types of shields. Since an airbrush atomizes and sprays paint, our line is always going to be naturally soft. So to sharpen that, we're going to need some tools. Frisket film, Shields and masks all work perfect for this. You could use any type of frisket film you like. They all seem to work the same to me. The kind I like the most is made by Art Tool, and the reason I like it is because it comes in a large roll. You can cut out custom sizes from it. I'm applying this frisket film to the top part of the candles. This way I can focus on the flames. Once I have it laid in, I'm using a number two X-Acto blade, and I'm cutting out the contours, which means the outlines of the flames and of the top part of the candles. Frisket film generally has a low tack to it, so when you place it down on canvas, you have to spray your paint very lightly over the top of it. If you just flood it with paint, that paint's going to get underneath the frisket and you're not going to have sharp lines and it's just going to be very messy. So just remember that when you put frisket down, you're always going to have to spray lightly and build the values up, the colors up, slowly. Since the film is transparent, I can see my line drawings underneath, so there's no problem cutting this out. You just have to go slow with it and take your time to make sure you get nice clean cuts. Since I'm using canvas which is wrapped or stretched over MDF board, I don't have to worry about using too much pressure. This uh, canvas is extremely durable, so if you're using something like paper or airbrush paper, you may have to use less pressure when you're cutting out your frisket film. This next part is extremely easy. You're just going to take your paint and lightly spray it over the top. What I like to do is I spray it and keep the air going, and once I have a uh, light layer down. I just spray the air over the top of it to help it dry and then I add another coat. And I just do this extremely slowly. This looks fast because it's sped up but just make sure you take your time because if you add too much paint like I said before it's going to get underneath that frisket film and you're not going to have a sharp line. Since I want to keep this lesson short I'm just going to show you how to paint one flame and then you can do that same thing on the other two. When I remove the frisket from this second flame, you can see that we get an extremely sharp line and a very bright area where the flame is. The problem with this though is that the line is too sharp. We're going to need sharp lines in some parts of it, but we're also going to need softer lines where the heat from the flame is blending out the background. 
What we're doing in this painting is essentially painting an illusion of fire or a flame. In order for us to create that illusion, we need our flame to be brighter than anything in the background. Now we're lucky on this one because this is a nice, simple, easy background. It's only one solid color of black. Colors that we see are highly influenced by the surrounding colors and values. In this Photoshop document, I'm going to show you a very simple example of this. As you can see, we have this document split into two colors, white and black. Now, if I take the same gray color and paint it on the black and then paint it on the white, you could see that on white, the color looks way darker than it does on the black. We of course know that these two values are exactly the same, but as you can see here, the background plays a huge role on the way that we see color. So in our painting, we're going to take advantage of this phenomenon to create the illusion of fire or a flame. The first thing we're going to have to do is soften the edges of this flame, particularly around the middle section of it. The color I'm using here is white by Cretex Illustration Colors. Now white is an opaque color because it has titanium dioxide in it. When you use any lighter opaque color that has white in it or titanium dioxide, the color is going to shift toward a blue grayish tone. This color shift could be very frustrating for any new painter and I'd be embarrassed to admit how long it took me to finally realize this. The solution to eliminate the blue shift is to spray the complementary color over the top of it. So the complementary color to blue is orange. I mixed a color of five drops orange and two drops yellow and took this color to lightly spray over the top of these flames. I've gotten to the point where I rarely use opaque colors anymore, especially white or titanium dioxide because that color shift can be so frustrating. But sometimes an airbrush does such a great job at something like blending soft edges that using an opaque color is the easiest solution. So that's what we did here with the flame. The opaque white does such a great job at softening up those harsh edges and giving us that illusion of fire. At the very bottom of these flames is a very bright blue coming through. So what I'm using is a mixture of five drops cobalt blue and one drop orange just to kind of mute it out and then lightly spraying that over the top of that white at the very, very bottom. I'm going to add that blue to the bottom of all three flames and then what we want to do is we want to let this paint dry for about five to ten hours because we're going to erase some of that orange color out in the middle of the flame. As you can see when we remove the frisket we have a nice clean area to work with on the candle. Now if any paint got under this it's no big deal because you could erase it or scratch it back out to pure white. From here I'm going to add some frisket to paint the left side here black so just lay it down then cut into it following your line underneath and then remember when you're spraying any sort of color over frisket you just want to go slowly in multiple passes. For the color of the candle I'm going to use some yellow and violet so I'm adding about 10-15 drops of yellow here to one drop of violet. I know some people like to mix their paint in their airbrush but I find it so much easier if you just buy these small little one ounce cups and mix your paint in here. This way you could adjust it and it's, it's just so much easier easier to, to work with. Now once I have this done I add a drop or two of distilled water and I use it around this consistency. You can see it's not too thin and uh, it flows perfectly through the airbrush. If you can I also recommend buying these cheap droppers. You could buy like 500 or a thousand of them for only a few dollars and uh, it just makes it cleaner to take the paint from the cup and add it into your airbrush. Since this color is 100% transparent, I could spray it right over the left side of this candle without worrying about altering the value or the color of the black behind it. Now if this color was opaque or had some white in it, it would be a different story. We'd need to mask that area off. But since it's transparent, it's going to make it a lot easier. Now on the right side of the candle, you could see I used some 3M vinyl tape. And to get a sharp line at the bottom, just using a shield. I didn't add as much paint to the top of the candle as I did to the bottom. So the bottom is going to be a little bit darker. And it's going to get lighter as we move up to the light source, which is the flame on top. And to lighten the top and add a bit of texture to it, I'm switching over to my eraser. And I'm erasing with small circular motions and some hatching techniques just to lighten up the left and the upper side of this candle and it also adds a slight texture to it so it doesn't look too smooth giving it that airbrushed look. Here I'm switching over to pure sepia and on the bottom right I'm lightly spraying this going from dark at the bottom up to a lighter gradient as we move up. This is going to give more depth to the candle and much more of a shadow as we move toward the bottom of it. I'm going to place a piece of frisket over this middle candle and cut it out so none of the overspray gets on the other candle we just finished. And we're going to use the exact same color. Um, this time though we just want to spray it lighter because we want this candle to be lighter than the other one. But we're going to do the exact same thing where we have a darker value at the bottom. So we're going to spray a bit more down there and uh, leave less up top. 
To make the candles more interesting, we're going to add some wax like it's dripping down the side of it. And this is really easy to do. I'm using my eraser, and what I'm doing is I'm kind of drawing in an oval shape toward the bottom to look like the wax is kind of beating up. And then just above that, I'm erasing out a thin uh, light line, and that's going to make it look like the, the wax is dripping down. And if you can see on this one that I just finished, I erase slight more... Um, of uh, the value out toward the top of it so it makes it look like there's some light hitting the top part of that bead of wax and then a little thin line at the bottom and you don't really have to go overboard and try to get these perfect if you just race out an oval or a circular shape with a line above it it'll create the impression of dripping wax so don't overthink it from here I'm going to work my way around this candle pulling out a few highlights. You can see on the edge or the side of the candle there's some areas of wax that are coming out so I'm just going to pull out some highlights on those as well. Moving along to this last candle I'm going to show you another technique we could use. Since the background is going to be black we don't have to worry about masking this at all so I'm just going to spray right over the top of it. The only thing I'm doing is I'm adding a piece of paper to the left side. This prevents any overspray from getting on the candle that we just finished. And from here, I'm just going to try to do the same thing by adding a gradient, uh, adding more paint to the bottom. And as I move up, I just spray less paint. But you can see here, any of that overspray that gets on the outside is not a big deal because we're going to be covering that up with black anyway. We'll eventually uh, cover that up with, a, uh, with some frisket film and we'll use that to sharpen the edges on the candle. Switching back to pure sepia, we're going to spray a gradient from the bottom moving up to the top and this is going to give us a good transition where the, uh, the light source is illuminating the top part of the candle and as it moves farther away from that light source the candle gets darker. I'm going to place on some frisket film to define the edge of this and just like before we're going to cut out the outline to give us a sharp contour and then I'm going to add some tape around the outside of it. This is going to prevent some overspray from getting on the left side. From here we're just going to take our black and lightly spray it. Um, just make sure you go slow with this. I know I keep saying that but it's so important. If you add too much it's going to get underneath that frisket and it's going to ruin the candle. So just go light and uh, take your time with it. When I remove the frisket film, you can see that we get a very sharp line, and that's what we want for this part of the candle. If any of that paint got underneath onto the candle, it's going to be nearly impossible to, uh, to clean up. You have to come in with an eraser, and it's just a lot of work. So you really have to decide which way you, you want to do it, if you want to do the background first, or if you want to paint the candles in the foreground first. From here, we're going to switch over to our eraser, and we're going to use it to pull out some of those highlights that make it look like wax dripping down the side of the candle. And just like before, this is easy to do. At the very bottom of each one, you're going to draw out kind of a circular oval shape, and then you're just going to draw a line up or erase out a line going up toward the top of the candle and if you'd like on each one of these droplets at the bottom you could add a highlight by erasing more on the top left corner and then a small area of reflected light at the very bottom just you can cut your eraser thin and pull out the highlight that way if you'd like you could also use your eraser to erase the center of each flame out this way you're going to have a brighter yellowish color in the middle of the flame and as it moves out to the outside it's going to show more of that orange that we sprayed on originally the last thing here is to add some black between these two candles. So just using some frisket film and some tape, I masked it off and sprayed right in the middle of it. And just like that, we're finished with the candles. And you can see just using a few colors and a few different tools and techniques, we're able to get a pretty photorealistic looking painting that's not that difficult to do. Remember, you want your flames to be the brightest part. So when you spray that orange on top of it, look too dark, you could switch over to your eraser and erase out the centers. And that'll give you a more realistic looking flame. So that's going to complete this tutorial. If you want to get more advanced and try to paint the bottom, the wax, and the wood grain, go for it. It's always good to try to challenge yourself. Remember, the most important thing for doing this though is your skills in observation so look at the reference that I provide in the beginning and do the best you can to replicate it and thank you so much to all the new subscribers it really means a lot to me and I, I really appreciate it so thank you so much and if you have any questions about this just feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you so thank you so much for watching hope you learned something hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one